I'm excited about this one. How to manage cravings. So this can work for anything from drinking to sugar, shopping, smoking, anything you might be craving that you don't want to. I'm going to share with you a six step practice, but before I do, here is the lifespan of a craving. The first thing that happens is we get triggered. So an urge or craving is triggered by a person, a place, a thought, a feeling, a sound, a smell, anything really. The next thing that happens is the rise. And so this is where the urge or the craving intensifies. This can happen quite suddenly or it can happen quite gradually over time. The next thing that happens is the peak. And this is where the craving is at its most intense, where it feels like it's never gonna go away. And finally, the fall. This is where the craving loses its intensity and slowly fades away. Urge surfing is a technique that you can use to avoid acting on any behaviors that you want to reduce or stop. The five steps of an urge surf are, step one, notice the craving. Step two, name the craving. Step three, prepare to ride the waves. Step four, observe the craving as it runs its course. Step five, check in with your values and do what matters. This is great, but for me, I needed a little bit more practical advice on how and why to ride the wave. Honestly, sometimes my cravings seem so unbearable that riding it out just seems impossible. Quit Like A Woman, the radical choice not to drink in a culture obsessed with alcohol by Holly Whitaker. This book has honestly changed my life. There are so many incredible human truths uncovered in this book and loads of practical advice for life, not just for quitting booze. Holly came up with a practice to specifically disarm a craving. She calls it raisins. Recognize, allow, set aside the story, investigate what happens to your body, name the sensations, surf. Using the practice, we learn to stay in our discomfort and witness the suffering rather than creating even more suffering. Recognize. The craving hits. Recognize you are having a craving. You are having a craving for alcohol, sugar, sex, shopping, smoking, whatever. Say it to yourself. I am experiencing a craving for Allow. It might sound counterintuitive, but let the craving build. Allow yourself to crave it. This allows you to conserve energy while giving space to the craving. Instead of expending energy trying to resist the craving, telling yourself that it's wrong and it shouldn't be happening, just let nature take its course. Set aside the story. Don't tell yourself that you're miserable, that this craving is a sign of some endless eternal struggle, something that you are powerless over. Instead, spend your energy doing the next step. Investigate the sensations in your body. What does it feel like? Is your head pounding? Feel like your throat closing in? Is your heart beating? Are your hands in fists? Are your legs shaking? Are you sweating? How does it feel? Name the sensations. Say them out loud or write them down. Ride or surf. Ride or surf the physical sensations as they intensify, peak, and drop down. The thing about cravings is that they present as entirely physical, but what's torturing us is the stories that we build around them. The raisins practice allows you to remove the narrative in your head, so you're only focusing on what happens in your body. Meditation and mindfulness practice should help with this massively. Direct the experience instead of being a victim to it. This is a practice that I'm really trying to use when a craving for alcohol, or in my case, more often sugar hits, and I'm really trying to sit with it, wait for it to pass, and not give in to the craving. I hope this helps. Let me know if you try it, or if you've got any other advice or ways that you manage your cravings. I would love to hear about it. If you like this video, please check out what happens to your body two weeks after giving up booze. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.